Hello, it's Noir Nerd again, and I'm doing another update vlog on the interactive 3D framework engine thing I'm working on called Papyrus 3D. I'll dive right into it, just say about the progress basically. Um, it's been much less, uh, much shorter video than the last one. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, take a look at where it's at now. So, this is the sort of prototyping sort of HTML page, how it's looking at the minute um, so it obviously looks a lot more developed than it did last time uh, the last time it was bad bones there wasn't really much there but um, let me describe what I've done obviously we've got a model in the middle so we've got our character model loading in though I <coughs> still have a bit of work to do with that because at the minute I'm actually hard coding in the 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 character but obviously I'm gonna want to add that dynamically um, I, I'm thinking via a component, but I'm just trying to figure out exactly how to do that. Probably just added an entity with a, the associated component attached to it. Uh, but I've only just started doing that, so more or less at the minute I'm just uh, figuring out exactly the specifics of that. So with that, and then you'll be able to pass that component a custom position and that sort of thing. So you could actually position it with the... This, this, configuration files basically you pass it and there's some other I've also added uh, I've also been thinking about the actual interaction so I want this to be primarily uh, an engine for um, mostly designed so that it definitely work in VR basically uh, it'll work in desktop and mobile as well but I want to make it so that the interface uh, interface and the UI basically definitely allows so obviously I did a curse gaze cursor component which is that black circle in the middle uh, I've got that issue yet. I'm not sure what that happens in a minute. It seems only to happen this model, so I'm thinking it might be a model issue. Or the camera clipping or something, but anyway. So, yeah, so we've got the, still got the text here, which is just coming from JSON, uh, which I've played around a bit with the actual configuration of the files and changing the way it's going to work a bit more. We have this room that's been good. And we've also got a skybox, which is, I've just specified that in the HTML, just as an experiment. Just so yeah, so now you can navigate through the, uh, so we've got the text, which is the initial loading text. And then if I look at this, it loads up the next one, I look again, loads up the next text passage, look again, just gaze for a few minutes. Possibly might make it a bit longer that you, sh you have to gaze for, I guess, and then again, a little weird name, and then it just loops around. So at the minute, it just loops around in a loop until when it reaches the end of the <coughs> this, the dialogue um, JSON, it basically just loops back to the start. And um, I've been working on a load of other things as well. Um, one thing I will show actually. So, that in times there will be multiple characters in the scene, right? So, I've also developed a component, which is a glow effect. I call it a glow effects component. I'll just change one thing here to make it visible. Now the minute, and, and then I've initially set it to invisible because. Um, so there you go. This is it. So, my idea is that basically whoever the current character is who's talking will have this. Component here. This is actually just a sprite, so it's going to have an image, and it will just give an indicator to the player about um, where which character is currently speaking. Which, which is so yeah, it's mostly just been UI and the core mechanic actually, which is the text. Obviously, if it's an interactive fiction game, you need that core of. Um, the uh, the navigation through text <coughs> working so yeah it's working now which is good um, I can do a little bit of code coverage I don't want to do too much because I'm actually a lot of it's prototyping at the minute a lot of it's uh, a lot of it's just like halfway through I'm going to actually make this I've decided now I'm going to make this uh, repository um, I am going to make it public I don't think that is really a big issue. I'm not, you know, I'm not. I'm only using vanilla JS and using a minified version of A-frame and some A-frame extras. I'm not doing anything that's like 
for that, you know. So I think I'm going to make it open source and just make it public now. Uh, I don't think there's a problem with that, really. Um, so yeah, I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to utilize the components more. So I've started doing this cursor listener component, which is just like written like a standard one. Um, let's load that up. In here. Yeah, so that's just the code for the cursor listener, which is um, at the minute that's just a random color as it loads up. Just I mean, it's like literally a test domain reason. I need to, I actually copied and pasted this code. Uh, the other's not, but this one I did. Um, yeah, and that loads in the next scene. So actually, this is this is sort of not really not relevant. It's just that's like a login for the see where the intersection happened. Blah blah blah. But then really, it's loading in this next scene, uh, which is in the main JS. That's like so it's just loading in a certain behavior, which we've defined. Uh, New things I'm working on. This is not I've not really tested this yet, but I'm creating a character component so you could then pass in different parameters based on your requirements for each character each time. Obviously, just makes it a lot better than just a like if I, um, you know, sort of just giving a character that's always going to be in the same place, do the same thing, yada yada yada. And then that's what I'm doing here is just. I'm just building that up at the minute and just trying to figure out exactly, uh, well, for a start, what parameters does this character need to be editable and how and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, random one, actually, like I start, <laughs> this is a bit, so I'm going to see actually about using a A-frame room component because that might be quite interesting. I'll show some of that experiment, actually, which is, this is like literally not not finished, I'm just going to... Oh, come on. Sorry, I'm just going to a bit uh, So if I go to... Like, there's this A-frame room component, which I think was done by a user on GitHub. Board. Oh, no, it's Raven or... And... I actually started into putting it into this project because somebody asked a question on GitHub yesterday about adding actual collisions. So I thought I'd just experiment and that as a black figure from here, I'll just do it in here. But I also am going to um, try and actually use um, this A-frame component. I'll just quickly show, I, mean, I think it's all up and running. This is just like a test index page. So this is just the test room that, that uh, gets loaded up, right? But the idea I had was that if you could, if, if and this is a big question, I'm not, because I'm not exactly sure how I'd convert the structure of the HTML here to uh, being able to actually create you know, proper rooms uh, and there won't be a movement camera that's not really what this is about but the idea I had was to basically say if boost, you start the scene here your camera is in a certain position and then you interact with sim characters here and they go move on and then you, you could have an option that says something like move north, move south, move west, move east like the classic interactive fiction games so if you, for example if uh, you start, it's for argument's sake, the camera's here, there's two characters, and then the, it gives you an option, do you want to move north, do you want to move south, do you want to move east, so we north, and then the camera position would just update to here, um, yeah, and then maybe I could add and take off WSAD, but that probably doesn't make much sense, actually, you could switch between static and um, camera, so maybe sometimes, like, for example, there's an interaction here and it's like, look at the three pictures closer up, which would then switch you from a look controls camera, which is this, where you can look around to a, a static camera with no controls applied to it. So that would probably be decent functionality to add, not very hard, literally just adding and taking away an attribute on HTML. Uh, or you could even just keep the look controls in there, that might be more simple, but basically I'm gonna, Try the idea I've had for a sort of example project is a sort of dungeon crawler, um, so that you'd you would have the ability to um, like in a sort of turn-based RPG, you could uh, like I said, the, the go forward, go back, go east, go west, uh, and it would give you the ability 
to like I said navigate through this different scene the rooms component might make it easier but I do need to figure out how exactly because I mean the thing is with the if you're going to use the rooms component then you want it so the cost I mean customer customization is very important if um, I want to make for example if the player want, if the designer for example wants to make a dungeon crawler it's very important that they're able to customize the dungeon basically um, so the, the the question is how do I integrate the component I've got to be able to do that the or how do I design my own component that would be the other thing I could design my own component um, it would be uh, a much more involved thing obviously but that is another possibility um, also thinking at the minute about the possibility so thinking at the minute about the possibility of adding some sort of like turn-based combat basically um, I was thinking probably base this on D&D &D in some way so again maybe this this is probably getting ahead of myself but I'm just thinking ahead for future features so basically with that you'd have some sort of dice and it would add, you'd have like a base setting so for example your strength is four and then you'd roll like the equivalent of d6 or d4 or whatever and and then you do this sort of D and D thing where you add it to your strength plus this and what and do the checks or and then, you know if you get whacked you check your whatever it is like constitution um that might be alright actually because like I could literally create just another JSON file for the player uh, with and then yeah, the designer could set their different their strength, their XP, their XP blah 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 um, again probably not too hard and probably going to go with that if I can get the time to do it but I digress so I'm not sure what else I can show. How long have I been talking for? 12 minutes. Uh, what else have I been working on? So yeah, this is the code for adding the button. Um, I think I'll leave that there. Um, I've... Yeah. yeah, I'll leave it there. There's not much more to cover actually. Um, so I hope you find that interesting. I'm going to continue vlogging on this when I can, when I think there's, you know, there's, there's, there's enough progression to, to show something. Um, and yeah. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, by the way, I don't know if the guy who asked this question will be asking, but um, like I said, I've been trying to add, implement a solution with, um, this guy basically messaged on the channel about a way to add colliders to the a-frame room component now for this project here like the time but not that important to what i'm doing because it's going to be most it's going to be like yes fixed position cameras there's not going to be any walking around with the tv anyway but i am trying to hack away a solution to do that which is hmm, probably about halfway done i think but uh if i do manage to crack that issue i will do another video about how to actually solve that with a sort of a hack solution, but it might actually work, so. Anyway, that's that. You know what nerd, like and subscribe. Uh, have a good day.